it's an oft quoted statement that the future of education relies on an ongoing dialogue between educators and educational institutions on one hand and professionals in the tech world on the other let's see friends what our guest today has to say about it mrs asta kataria the managing trustee of the ashoka group of schools from the national institute of technology raipur she is a bachelor of engineering in electronics and telecommunications from there to a business finance specialist working in the corporate world and now managing not one not two not three but four school campuses catering to 5000 plus students tell us about it welcome first of all and tell us more about it thank you so much for inviting me here i'm asta kataria i'm a part of ashoka group my journey in education began as a parent where uh, i find uh, that there's so much to be done in education space when my child started going to school uh, there are a lot of refinements which needs to be brought in there are a lot of transformations which education space needed and that really somewhere ignited that passion which was somewhere within me uh, as a child as as a teenager as an as a growing up person to really uh, change the whole dimension of education so yes that's how i began my journey and as i uh, got myself involved in education i believe i realized more and more with the passing years that this is this is my passion this is my purpose of life where i want to transform lives i really want to bring in that change that very essential change in this field of education so i'm very proud i'm very happy with what i'm doing today wow uh, you've always aimed to build a community of lifelong learners striving for excellence and inspired by achievement and success and according to you and you've said this at so many forums that the need of the r is to sensitize education uh i'll again connect this to my story where you know i'm an electronics engineer who who excelled in competitive examinations who was academically brilliant child and uh, you know went to electronics engineering but when i look back i realized that i didn't have the clarity i didn't have that thread of okay this is my passion and this is what i want to pursue i was still figuring it out for a long time and i believe that's one of the key takeaways which i took from my own life that yes you know you need to find your purpose and passion at a much early stage as an engineer i was not clear what i was what i have to do after engineering so an education i come from a small um, setup a small town where education had a limited domain and i as a person i believe in a learner throughout your life so i see that there's so much to learn in this world and there's so little time and with the whole philosophy we intend we in education we intend to empower the learners at a very early age we intend to empower the learners to explore the world around them to really expose them with the right things in the world to really um, you know explore them uh, make them explore the world so that they can find what is their passion what is their interest how can they build their skills in the area of their interest and that is i believe the real purpose of education that i can create passionate lifelong learners learners who are not confined with the four boundaries of classroom an education system which is really bringing in uh, the life skills in the children and which is focusing less on content and more on concept um you know which are which is teaching children to create and not to confirm you know we we intend to move from imparted knowledge to where the kids where the children acquire knowledge where they are researchers where they enable their thinking process because in the world in which they are going to step in this future world demands more and more of people who are resilient people who have a faith who have a belief in their ideas people who have those right life skills to be a leader be a sustainable leader who knows how to you know be resilient enough to bounce back and take the lead 
in their real life so i believe our education is more to do with empowerment exposure and exploration of the child wow so a very very futuristic vision um, thank you no wonder a uh, entrepreneur of the year future 50 leaders shaping success no wonder your cup of um, or your maybe we could say your chalice of awards overfloweth uh i have not uh, have much to say here uh, i would just say that uh, you know these recognitions these awards it definitely motivates you it 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 uh, helps you to move further it it suggests you that you are moving in the right direction but it's never uh, one person's achievement it is i dedicate all the success to my entire team uh, you know who are working in day in day out to really uh, reach our mission and vision of ed- in education they are the ones who are the real uh, you know um, takers of this award and these recognitions and not to mention that you know uh, these are very small milestones which we have crossed the journey is far far uh, long and we have just started so miles to go before i sleep yes Sorry. okay <laughs> um a lot of humility there uh, you are also known to be a great adventure sports person cycling hiking driving uh, tell us about this part of your life and does this uh, i'll just complete this question yes does this um, did this have any impact on your success in the field of education yes i am a nature enthusiast i would say and uh, my love for nature brings me close to um the adventures a little bit of hiking cycling um and whatever like you know i i just love to learn i just love to do something different new i believe doing anything new doing something for the first time really charges me and that brings in a lot of energy that also comes uh, from a simple fact that you know when i was growing up i had limited opportunities in front of me and uh Uh, you know as i grow up as an individual uh, as an entrepreneur i i see that uh, we need to give those endless opportunities those endless exposures to our students to our kids to our children so that they identify their passion at a very early age you know as an individual i found my passion over a period of time and uh, i believe at the age of 30 i realized that oh wow i love being in nature and you know the kind of connection i establish with nature is something very different but i believe these kids they need to know they need to explore this much in advance and yes uh, nature sports adventures teaches you a lot more what academics can teach you so i believe in that and that's how our program in education revolves around the overall development of the child uh it revolves around like you know bringing the child exposing the child into different arenas of uh, performing arts sports of fine arts of uh, you know right from sky exploring the sky where we have an astronomy lab astronomy club set up where you know sc- students do the sky gazing to uh, touching the ground where you know we have various programs which really uh makes them understand what's going on ground right from agriculture to different uh, elements of uh, entrepreneurship to uh, how to be really uh, imbibed and rooted with your culture i believe it's a combination of everything and it's an integral part of how do we uh, impart education so education is a very open term and uh, we strongly feel we should not confine confine the education in the four boundaries of the classroom yes so children reaching out to the sky but feet firmly rooted into the earth wow um you also have entered the world of neuro linguistic programming yes and um it's one more feather in your ever glowing cap well um your journey of discovery into this world um that's interesting that's a topic uh, that's a subject close to my heart so uh, neuro linguistic programming nlp uh, is a subject which is close to me um and uh, it's very very uh, relevant in educational context as well uh, so just to uh, tell you like you know nlp or neuro linguistic programming 
talks about neuro linguistic programming uh, your brain language development like you know brain language programming how to really channelize your brain how to um, you know build strategies to change the language of your brain to change the communication within your brain it is more to do with wiring inside your brain and how to build strategies to have a very sorted you know person inside as a sorted person outside is required wow in a very simple terms and i believe that uh, it is very very relevant because whatever uh, you know we see in the world around us the outrage the violence everything is coming from that inner unrest everything has a link with the uh, inner loneliness inner uh, unstable mindset so uh, what is more important here is to have that balance within right and uh, that balance within can be achieved by a constant working on your conscious and subconscious mind a constant effort to remove the layers of wrong perceptions which you carry and to constantly program yourself in the right direction and that's something uh, i connect because that's something which is very much required uh, for the collaboration for the team building for uh, having relationships professionally wow. as well as personally and i won't say that we um, provide neuro linguistic programming kind of a concept to our young learners but we have developed uh, a concept in similar lines which can empower these young learners to create the right mindset in them beautiful and eventually lead to a balance as you said yes right so uh, talking about a balance in life uh, what do you at the ashoka group of schools do um to bring about a uh, change or to cater to the social um uh, emotional and spiritual needs of a student uh, i believe this is like something which uh, everyone in the community um uh, the parents uh society the educators everyone is having lot of turbulences in their mind with respect to the changing mindsets of the children uh with respect to the exposure which they are gaining in this world uh with respect to the challenges which this high tech sci-fi world brings along uh so uh, i believe it is very very important for us as an educational institute for the parents to really emphasize a lot on the value imbibement in the child and that value imbibement cannot continue uh, in one moral science lecture in the class so we have we as an institute we we have collaborated and come together and designed uh, a structured curriculum uh, which we term as magic of happiness wow yes uh, magic of happiness because uh, we intend to create that magic in every child we intend to create that happy mindset in every child where uh, the child is given those small small learning in a very informal way where they are taking these things in the form of discussions in the form of case studies uh, in the form of um, role modeling and uh, we uh, infuse the important elements of um, optimism resilience uh, self determination empathy self esteem vitality these are few of our core pillars of this magic of happiness value based curriculum and uh, it's beautiful it is it is transforming our educators as well as it is bringing the transformation in our children in a very conducive environment fantastic so core values of the ashoka group you've just uh, spelt out and um if i were a parent right and i'm saying this um on on screen in front of the camera if i were a parent in nashik i think ashoka group would be the school i would go to or i would send my children to definitely i right? would just add here sir that like you know uh, it's 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 a very ethical responsibility of any educational institute Fantastic. to ensure that the child is nurtured with all these values the child is um, like you know is having those as a part of uh, the same program with the same rigor 
the way we impart academics the way the child acquire that knowledge the child has to acquire that and he is going to do that uh, seeing it around him so it is not just like you know a school it's a collaborative effort which we all as a society have to take in Fantastic. which will bring the change yes um a visionary you are regarded by many as a change agent uh, for schooling in nashik um now you were just talking about uh, technology in education edtech as it is called nowadays so um how do you use it at the ashoka group of schools to transform the way children learn again a very interesting <laughs> topic uh technology yes um i believe it's something which is with us and we just can't do without it uh, we as individuals can't do without it and uh it is there it has completely transformed the way we think the way we do and the way we live technology has completely changed the knowledge landscape uh, you know uh how uh, the rise of data ai um uh, online learning modules flipped classroom machine learning everything has transformed the way the education pedagogy should be taken up so i cannot continue giving the same education with the same teacher teaching in the class with a blackboard or a whiteboard or with a with a projector yes, that's yes, just yes. not enough you know i have to understand that technology in the education should be infused in such a way that the educator is still at the center of the product design okay. and implementation the educator is using it very wisely to enable the child to come to emerge as a researcher to emerge as a thinker where the child takes advantage of the technology in the right way you know not overdo it because this is something which is very sensitive we as individuals we don't get to understand do you know the fine uh, line yes you you know how much of time we as adults we spend on an average if you take a national average what's the average screen time which one individual uses in a day for example okay i give up so uh, just just take a wild guess <laughs> mm, maybe 5 hours yeah so it's it's approximately 6 hours of you're very close 6 hours of screen time on an average so what are we expecting from students and are we adding to these number of screen uh, you know number of screen time are we making them addictive so i believe the technology usage has a lot to do with the developmental psychology of the child has a lot to do with the psychology of addiction has okay. a lot to do with the educational psychology and i have to be very clear i have to be very clearly demarcating at what age and how much of screen time how much of technology enabling i am doing because ultimately the strong fact and the very good fact which remains is the child needs a teacher yes. the child needs a personal touch and that personal that human connection would actually aspire and inspire the child Fantastic. If you go to a nurse, if you go to a doctor, if you want to meet a lawyer, you have all the online resources available with you. But you would still like to sit face to face with that person. Sit face to face with that person, right? Absolutely. Similarly, the child needs the teacher, Education not just to. Is a social process. Yes, it's not just to educate. You know, it's more to do with content learning. I believe it's, 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 it's more to do with like you know less to do with content learning and more to do with connection, more to do with mentoring. more to do with uh, like you know uh, believing that okay yes my teacher is there for me to have that trust to have that relationship so teacher led technology is the way ahead yes absolutely and at the same time teachers need to elevate their tech skills wow to adapt to this changing world because students they are much faster uh, at a they much faster pace they are native to technology yes so i believe that's equally equally important equally important right Okay, a question which is very much off the cuff. Um, what inspired you, motivated you, whatever, to curate TEDx events? Okay, uh, I believe TEDx event is uh, one such event which I myself uh, follow uh, these events. I find them very inspiring, and in my educational context, 
I curated TEDx Youth Event, you know, which is primarily uh, focusing on inspiring youth, which aims to bring before them individuals, professionals who have achieved a particular milestone in their life. And my whole intention was to really empower them to believe in their own ideas, to believe that, yes, I can take plunge. And, you know, there are individuals like me who have believed in their own idea, idea and they have reached to a particular stage in life. So my whole concept of TEDx Youth revolved around, uh, you know, making these individuals explore different professions, different professional journeys, so that they are not limiting themselves to one particular career direction. At the same time, they know that there are going to be challenges. They know, they understand from their stories that there are going to be challenges, there are going to be, you know, barriers on their way. But if they have that faith, if they have that guts to really follow their ideas and pursue that with utmost dedication, they are going to reach and they are going to make a difference because today is a world of creators. You know, I mean, the amount of disruptions which we see around, yes. uh, it's, it's, it's a world of creating ideas, believing, empowering yourself to take plunge and sustaining it. So they have to be very clear that they are building up these skills on their way, you know, as they're taking education. Exactly. Okay. Um, from state board to the ICSE, ISC, you have worked across a plethora of uh, uh, boards and curricula. My last question to you. Your advice to parents choosing the right board, the right curriculum, the right school for their students, for their wards, for their children. Okay. Mm, I sound like now I'm, I'm speaking to a parent and um, I believe uh, what I uh, as an institute and we as an institute follow is, you know, a uh, what is more important is what I'm wanting to impart as a whole vision of my institute. A curriculum is just a tool which I'm using, you know, just to channelize the education process in a formal way. But a curriculum has uh, nothing to do with how I'm really nurturing the child or it has very less to do with. I can even in SSC curriculums. So I believe let's go back, right? Uh, in which medium have you uh, been taught? State board, right? And just go even before that. So, what was the uh, what was the board we were really following? Following? Uh, there were no boards at that time, right? Uh, and if you go way far back, yeah. yes. And uh, I believe what we hear the stories. Uh, it used to be a gurukul system. Yes. It used to be a, a teacher. Uh, you know, a teacher as a mentor who is who is threading uh, the entire learning. Uh, there never used to be compartments of subjects. That okay, now I have the science period and now I go to my maths period and now the, we have a PE lesson. It used to be all connected. It used to be all connected in a very natural, conducive environment, which the child used to just take. And yes, we have had great scholars. So then why are we binding ourselves uh, in a particular curriculum? And one very interesting thing, you know, if you, if you uh, look at from this angle is that uh, the... Uh, most amazing boards like you know if if I talk about preschool education we talk about Reggio Emilia we talk about Waldorf system of education what is that it is all somewhere deriving from that Gurukul uh, system of education where the teacher is at the center and the teacher is acting as a mentor and is threading the entire learning where in one concept I'm threading the science math English other languages and okay. values and everything and I believe that's the right way, you know, let us, let us, let us move beyond timetables and syllabuses and divided syllabus and, um, you know, really following a structured planning. Okay, whatever you have to do in the little uh, primitive of, uh, you know, the board requirements and everything, you continue. But the whole objective should lie in this threaded learning where the child gains the max, you know, what I would understand because there I understand the application. I just don't understand the subject content. I understand how do I apply in life. And that is the learning for life. You know, that's something yes. I would carry with me. Perfect. So that's the essence of education. So threaded learning, universalization of education is what we are looking at. Okay, so friends, 
Uh, this was uh, Asta Kataria speaking about her life and uh, the Ashoka group of schools in Nashik. At times, I did not know whether I was the interviewer or the interviewee. Yes. <laughs> and, uh, but amazing talk. Thank you so much. Thank it you. It was a pleasure having you here. Thank you very pleasure much. Pleasure is all mine. Thank you.